Hello fellow Voyagers, Jess here with Odyssey Human, here today to talk about how to get rid of unwanted conditions fast. Welcome to the channel. This is the place where we help you hack through the jungles of consciousness and discover the hidden treasures inside of you. Everything you want is already there for you, waiting for you to activate it right now. So if that sounds good to you, please subscribe. We'd love to have you on the channel. Today I want to talk about <laughs> a lot of stuff. We're going to pack a lot of stuff into this talk um, because I want, to, I want to give you some food for thought because that's how we turn belief on and off, right? We think about things and we then take that as evidence that something is true or not true. So let's start with the story. My brother, when he was younger, used to have a lot of nightmares about witches and it was very uh, scary for him. He really suffered, and these were recurring nightmares. He would always dream of witches. It sounded like, from what he was telling, sharing with us, that you know it was kind of a similar dream all the time. It just kept coming back, kept coming back, and it really profoundly affected him. You know, it, it affected not only you know created fear in the dream in the nightmare, but it it created a lot of fear in his then waking reality of anything that resembled a witch, right? He kind of had a trigger about witches and Halloween and the fear and, you know, scary things and, and certain aspects of them that reminded him of the nightmares. Um, but the thing about, you know, nightmares is we know they're not real. And um, my brother having Down syndrome, you know, when we were kind of trying to talk him out of like, this isn't real, like this isn't, you know, the, the witches that you're seeing perceiving in this nightmare are not real. But really having to keep reiterating that to him, um, because his question was always like, well, how do I know they're not real? How do I know they're not real? And so this is the bigger question that we're going to talk about today. We're going to really get into this and dive into this Um because when we are assessing something, right, in this situation with my brother, eventually he did latch on to the idea that it wasn't real, that those witches were not real. When we're building beliefs or destroying beliefs, what we do, you know, we're gathering evidence and then we're assigning a meaning to that and then we're taking a leap. We're essentially making a decision. You know, we gather some evidence, we assess it in our mind, and we're like, okay, is this real or fake, <laughs> fact or illusion, um, you know, worthy of my attention, not worthy of my attention. And then at some point, the scales tip and we make a leap of faith, literally, where we just like, I'm deciding that this is real, or I'm deciding this isn't real, you know, and there's a little bit of like a preemptive, like, we just got to go for it. Of either trusting, you know, in my brother's case, it was him trusting us, that we were telling, you know, he trusted us as authority figures, as that we knew. Then we we're telling him they're not real, then they're not real. And we're doing this all the time with our beliefs. You know, we might have an image that beliefs are these concrete things and they're so hard to change. No, we're constantly doing this. And really, when we dig deeper into this, it's all arbitrary. <laughs> so let's let's get deeper into this, right? Because the experience he was having was very it was, it was emotionally relevant for him. Like that was his reality was he was being terrorized by these witches, not only, you know, in, in these nightmares, but in sometimes in waking reality in images or in people up, dressed up in costume or, you know, he would, that was his experience and his experience was totally valid. Like that was his, his reality. Um, so, but on a bigger scale, I want to relate this to what we're all doing every day, right? And when he decided, he just was like, okay, this isn't real. I'm going to trust in the unreality of this. Then it all, the nightmares stopped. He stopped being afraid, right? It, it kind of, he literally jumped realities. He quantum jumped by taking that leap of faith into, I'm going to trust in the unreality of this. So let's talk about how we do this with unwanted conditions. Let's bring it back. Everything that we're experiencing, everything, every perception that you're having, like whether that we're assessing as real or noise, right? We're putting into two categories. We're either saying, 
again, this is real or this is fake. This is pertinent to me. This is just noise. You know, this is we're we're toggling a switch with with the things that we're perceiving, everything we're perceiving, everything we're perceiving with our senses, everything we're smelling, hearing, tasting, touching, um, you know, experiencing. This goes for for all of it, um, and it extends into whether it's our dream state, as in with my brother, or it's our waking reality, or it's our imagination. Because really, there's no the only the only boundaries between those, all of those perceptions are the ones that we're assigning. It's all the same stuff. It's all made of our awareness, right? It's all coming through our awareness. We're experiencing it through our awareness as awareness. And so every perception, all those perceptions are all the same. They're all made out of the same stuff. We just you know, put them on, you know, well, waking reality is more, is more real to me than my imagination. In my brother's case, his, night, his nightmares became more real to him than waking reality, right? That was more real. That there was more assignment in his mind and his awareness of the reality of that and then the emotion that came from that. So, um... When we want to, when we're experiencing things in the 3D that aren't uh, pleasant to us, or if we're having nightmares, or if we're having intrusive thoughts, I mean, this goes for, you know, in PTSD, when people have intrusive thoughts, and they suddenly have flashbacks of something traumatic. All we've got to do, all we've got to do, it's all the same stuff. It's all awareness. It's all our perceptions. All we have to do is remove ourselves, remove the reality of that. So how do we do that? How do we remove the reality of something? We stop believing in it. And I have touched on this in other videos, but a great visual example. Um, I was watching everything everywhere all at once the last couple nights. I watched it a couple times because it's so rich and so good. And I highly recommend this movie. And there are some deep philosophical themes in it that I think, again, when you watch it multiple times, you're like, whoa, this, the onion layers keep peeling back on this. Um, but I'm going to link a scene in the description box that it really struck me in the movie. I mean, it's a, it's a long movie, but there is a part where um, Jobu Tapaki and Evelyn are fighting and Jobu Tapaki is holding like different weapons in her hand. And she's saying, now you see, you see that everything is a superposition of vibrating particles, <laughs> right? It's rearranging particles in a vibrating superposition. That's what she says. Rearranging particles in a vibrating superposition. And the weapons in her hand are changing, 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 and, until one of them sticks and it's the sword and she kind of comes at the other character. So that is what we're doing right? That is, that's kind of what's happening behind the scenes of all of these perceptions that we're having are potentials and they're all equal, right? So whatever we're, whatever we're observing or experiencing, they're all these potentials, kind of like the weapons in our hand that are just shifting, they're phase shifting, and we're selecting certain potentials and activating them we're activating them with, and how do we activate them? By, by saying that they're real, they're relevant, they're important to us by giving them our attention and our story, right? Those are our two faculties. We're directing our attention at them and then we're deciding in their reality. We're like, this is real. We do that because we get, we have some sort of emotional response or, and that is that, that tangible element to it makes it very, very, very real, right? And my brother's dreams and his nightmares, those witches were so real. They were so frightening and so scary. And so for us to tell him it's not real, it's, it's a hard, it was initially a hard leap for him to believe, right? <laughs> so the potentials are always going to be there, right? I think with manifesting, you know, we, we imagine that, well, why am I still seeing this? You know, if it's not, why am I still seeing these things that I don't want? Why am I not seeing the things that I do want? 
we keep things activated, we keep the potentials in our perception by participating in them, right? And so how do we, how do we, when we, as soon as we stop participating in them, right? As soon as my brother could lock on to the feeling of those witches aren't real. You can imagine this as a nightmare. You know, when you really think about if you can catch that feeling of recognizing when a nightmare isn't real, even if it's in front of you, even if you're in the dream experiencing it and it's in front of you and you're like, this isn't real. I am not, I'm going to choose not to believe in this. I'm going to choose. I'm going to choose right? It can be happening to me. It can be in my face. It can be 24 seven. Those witches are up in my face cackling, you know, but the dream, the structure, I am, I'm choosing not to believe in this because every perception that we have, we are arbitrarily deciding whether it's real or not. It's all the same stuff. It's all conscious awareness. It's all awareness. So we can literally, you know, you know, we'd like to say, well, this is, this is true because, you know, I'm, there's evidence for that. Yes, that's true. That's sure. But there's also evidence that it's not true, (laughs) right? And you may, in listening to the words I just say, that may be enough evidence for you. You may go watch the clip and have it resonate, the clip from the movie, from everything, everywhere, all at once, and have it resonate in your body. And that feeling for you is like, that's enough. That's all the truth I need. It just feels right. But again, (laughs) these are all arbitrary. We're just arbitrarily doing this. We're arbitrarily picking like true, not true, true, not true. We're arbitrarily doing this. And so we start to lose, think about that as, because if you do, if you really think about it and touch the feeling of it, you loosen up these old structures that we operate from where we just assume something is true, right? We just go to the witches in the dream are true and I'm not going to question them because I feel the fear in my body and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm having the sensations in the dream and yes, it's real, done. We start to loosen those structures of how we are generating our reality and that is the point of not believing in the things that we see that are unwanted. Because I believe, you know, in the movie, everything everywhere all at once, they call it verse jumping, quantum jumping, right? She's jumping between universes, like, and they're overlapping. And we're doing this all every day with these micro decisions of reality and illusion that we're assigning. Like we're literally jumping in and out, just like in the movie. You know, you start when you watch the movie a few times, you're like, whoa, this is matrix level mind bending movie. (laughs) We're like, this feels true to me. Some of this, you know, some of this really feels true. So, and I think, I believe what I've found in my experience is when we are looking at something that's unwanted and we're having this negative emotion and we really, we sense our desire in it, our desire to have the the situation be opposite or to have the situation go away or have the situation change or to have it shift that beacon from another, from, you know, where we're supposed to be, the reality where we're supposed to be experiencing our desire, the reality where it's playing out, the reality where we're getting everything we want is our beacon. And that's where we're supposed to be. I feel that's what it feels like to me. It's like, I'm supposed to be over there right now, but it's in our refusal to let go of the reality of the unwanted conditions that we aren't already there, right? Cause we're already there. The desire is the beacon to be like, It's our homing beacon. Like in the movie, we're like, ding, ding, you're supposed to be right here in this reality experiencing this right now. But we slow ourselves down. We resist (laughs) because we're like, oh, but I'm right here in this reality and this horrible opposite is playing out and I have to deal with it and I have to, I have to fix it and I have to wrestle with it and I'm trying not to, all we've got to do. So try, try, try this, try this to verse jump. Try this to quantum jump, 
Try this to manifest whatever you want to call it. Stop believing in the reality of your unwanted conditions. Like literally as you're perceiving it, put it on the same level as you would a nightmare about witches. Like you can reach for that. I think we can all reach for a time when we had a nightmare and we're like, oh, okay, that's not real. Like it's instant where we're like, it is not real. And in that instant of us deciding it's not real, it's not real. That's the power that we have. This is, <laughs> this is the power that we have as awareness, as these points of awareness that get to, you know, and we're assigning yes or no, true or false, real or illusion. It's all the same. Whatever we, we are so fixated on, yes, this is the truth, is what we're generating, is what we're experiencing. Like that's, this is the big secret of manifesting. So if you want to be able to quantum jump, if you want to be able to be a master manifester, if you want to instantly change circumstances in front of your eyes, try, you know, and if you've, if you've tried a lot of other stuff, try believing in the disbelief, try unbelieving in it. Put it, give it the same amount of truth as you would a nightmare. Be like, this isn't, this isn't where I'm supposed to be right now. I'm not going to participate in this. It's not real. I'm not going to participate in it. I'm not going to keep giving it my energy and I'm not going to keep activating this potential and animating it because then you keep seeing it, keep experiencing it, keep feeling the emotions. That's why it doesn't go away. Just remove your attention. Remove yourself from the potential. It's not like we're making the potentials disappear, right? That's when people say creation is finished. That's what they mean. Everything is in potentials. All of these perceptions that we're experiencing are potentials. All of these potentials are flashing through our awareness, whether they're a dream, our imagination, waking reality, they're all potentials. And we're grabbing a couple of them and saying, oh, this is real. And then we're entering into that reality as the avatar, playing it out, participating, feeling the emotions. It's so real. But the minute we remove that reality, poof, back into the void they go, back into the void they go. So when you see an unwanted circumstance, when you experience it, when you sense it, when you feel it, when it brings up the emotion in you, remember that this is no different from a nightmare. And you don't have to believe in it. You don't have to believe in it. So take this video as evidence that you can do this. Try it. Try it out. I invite you to just try it out and see what happens. And then see how much easier then it is to move to your desired reality. You know, throw it once you remove or once you activate the unreality of your unwanted situation, you're like, this isn't what I'm seeing isn't actually real right now. Then every once in a while, sprinkle in where you want to be. Hone in, visualize, observe, affirm, whatever technique you use, where you want to be and you're going to tip the scales. So you're going to tip the scales and let me know what you find. I'm happy to engage with you. Drop a comment below. Um, and if you're looking for any uh, assistance with emotional mastery, or if you need a consistent tool to use just like this one, the one that I said today, um, there's also in the description box, a free video that I have that trains you on my stop, drop and roll tool. So thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day. Bye.